It's back to do this. Yeah, sorry. We'll see you in March. It wasn't snowing. Yeah. yeah. It's 70, almost 70 degrees today. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sure. You're welcome. Thank you. Don't get me started on that, because they won't. Are you looking for a central way to centralize it? Um, Commissioner Sweeney, may I make a request Yes. that um, you move to agenda item number five, because I believe there are some people here that um, are interested in it and would like to speak about it. Okay. Agenda item number five. Okay, Silo Hill, approval yes. of the contract for Silo Hill Stormwater Management Basin. Correct. Kathy? Yes, thank you. Do you want me to leave the computer here? Just drop it. Okay, everybody. So this is the Silo Hill Stormwater Basin Retrofit Project. Um, first, I'm gonna just going to give a really brief, uh, quick update with our MS4 program, which for those who do not know, it's Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System. So it's a separate system from your actual sewer when you flush a toilet. It's actually the water going into your uh, basins and coming off your roofs and going into your uh, streets and everything else. So let's see so the board approved the town's ms4 chesapeake bay restoration work plan on the 7th of october 2019 um, plan restoration activities at that time in order to meet the town's mandatory uh, federal and state restoration requirements included planting 10 acres of trees at the wastewater treatment plant in 2021 um, we estimated that cost to be between 50 to 70 thousand um, the Silo Hill Stormwater Management Pond Retrofit, which is uh, being planned to be conducted in 2022, estimated cost at that time was between 100 to 150,000. And also the Northgate uh, Stormwater Management Pond Retrofit in 2024, which estimated cost between 100 and 150,000. Other projects included uh, street sweeping, which we already do, catch base cleaning, which our crews are now doing, and the Provincial Parkway out outfall stabilization. So at that time, we were estimating the total, just the restoration costs um, for the current permit term to be between 256 to 376,000. In the past couple of months, uh, the mayor, Kathy, and I have been in discussions with a nonprofit called Streamlink Education, which is a local organization out of Walkersville. Uh, Streamlink's mission is to connect communities to conservation through educational and meaningful volunteer tree planting experiences. Um, it's amazing they have a, a volunteer base of over 900 members uh, in Frederick County. Uh, Streamlink, um, after discussions with them, Streamlink is going to apply for an approximate $300,000 Maryland Department of Natural Resources grant on behalf of their organization in the town in 2020, 2020 in order to plant 30 acres of trees. Uh, the town will need to chip in 50000 towards the plantings, and the grant will cover the remainder of the cost. Um, this, will, uh, this project will eliminate the need for the town to retrofit the Northgate uh, stormwater basin during this permit term. Quick question. Sure. The 50000 will that be a cash expense, or will that be in kind based on staff services? That's going to be cash. Okay. There's no way that we can do it through staff match mm -mm. no okay not, not with the number of trees that have to be planted and the acreage that it has to be done okay yeah 30 acres a lot of trees um so we still plan to plant 10 acres of trees at our wastewater treatment facility <clears throat> which is shown in red and it's along this border right here um regarding the remaining 20 acres we have been in discussions with the daughters of charity and they are willing to donate a 15 to 20 acre conservation easement to help cover the remaining 20 acres of tree plantings the proposed eas easement will be located on the daughter's property directly beside the wastewater treatment plant which is shown in orange um, in order to gain restoration credit we will need to annex the wastewater treatment plant, which is approximately 85 acres, and the Daughters of Charity property, which is approximately 70 acres, into the town boundary. Uh, one of the goals in the 2015 comprehensive plan uh, was to annex, and this is also in the 2009 comprehensive plan, was to annex the wastewater treatment plant into the town boundary as the institutional zone. Um, so this would be consistent with that plan, and it would meet one of our goals. 
Uh, I would like to bring the annexation request to the board at some point in 2020. Um, the daughter's parcel is not specifically mentioned in the town's growth boundary. However, we believe it would be an appropriate addition to the town. Um, let's see. Uh, here's a map of our growth boundary. So you can see that parcel is just right outside of that boundary. But if we did that, it would be consistent um, in our future boundary. This is the FEMA area here. Uh, let's see. So that was a quick update on the MS4 program. Are there any questions before I start the actual presentation on the Silo Hill Basin? Okay. So um, we published the Silo Hill Stormwater Basin Restoration Project request for proposals on December 3rd, 2019 through January 22nd, 2020. This was published on our website, Facebook page, Channel 99, two advertisements in the Frederick News Post, uh, posted on posted in the MML classifieds and emailed or mailed to nine known stormwater management consulting firms. Town staff met and reviewed uh, seven bids that we received on January 24th, which ranged from $222,000 to $845,000. Based on comparable bid packets, staff recommends going with the three firm team of Barton, Bearing Construction Company, and Native Scapes for the Silo Hill uh, stormwater basin retrofit project total cost estimate is between 200,000 and 250,000 project completion is scheduled before October 30th 2022 please note that this price does not include grant funding um, the cost for the town could significantly decrease if awarded grant funding um, some key notes of their bids their bid includes they are based out of Maryland and have 103 years of combined experience Barton has uh, previous town experience. They are previously known as Advanced Land and Water. Um, with outfall inspections, um, they designed our standard operating procedures, procedure uh, stormwater manual. They help us with GIS, water sewer, feature mapping, etc. cetera. Um, they all have extensive and impressive references. I, Mrs. Nail and I uh, called around and emailed and they were all great. Um, they included a very detailed conceptual plan of the proposed improvements, which was not uh, required in our RFP, which was really nice. Their preliminary design includes native seed mixes and trees to minimize maintenance costs for the town. They will provide a maintenance manual after completion, and they have helped past clients obtain more than $31 million in grant funding, which was one of the big aspects of us wanting to recommend them. Uh, as a part of the fee, Barton will be assisting the town in applying for grants to help fund this project. It is important to note that these grants are highly competitive because there are so many MS4 ma uh, mandated communities in Maryland and across the United States. We are budgeting for the worst case scenario um, because we must complete the project regardless of grant funding, but I am confident that we will receive some grant funds. Um, after discussion with Barton, we could potentially receive up to $100,000 um, from the Chesapeake and Coastal Grants Gateway and possibility of 75% of the total costs from MDE's Water Quality Financing Administration. We will also evaluate the use of volunteers uh, like school groups, Boy Scouts, etc., etc., to potentially help defray um, some costs not covered in the grant. So um, Barton provided a sample concept plan of their uh, proposed design, which is shown on the screen currently. Uh, we will work closely with Barton, the Silo Hill Homeowners Association, and the Silo Hill residents in order to design a basin that not only meets the state's and federal government's requirements, but also ensure it's visually, visually appealing to the neighborhood. Question. Yes. Are we putting a wayside exhibit there, too? Actually, the reason why we're, we're, we're going to do that is because it, it has an educational component, okay. and grants love that, that, that kind of stuff. Okay. So. Yeah. And hopefully we can bring some school groups over and um, work that into. Is the utility cabinet there now? And will that be? Yes, it is. And will it, that in any way be affected by the process? Right there in that corner. And no, no, that's that's. Yep, that will have to stay. Well, no, but I'm not asking that. But will that be in any way hindered or encumbered during this process? No, no, okay, no, not great. at all. So I think they did a really good job, but we are going to work with them, and we do want to hold um, a meeting with the homeowners association and um, the residents of Silo Hill, we're gonna send out letters. Um, if this gets approved tonight, we wanna keep them in the loop every step of the way, because this is their basin. Is the HOA there responsible for the maintenance of the grasses <coughs> inside and outside of the fence? Currently, yes. Um, we need to work with the HOA. 
since we're doing all this work and putting all this money into it, um, we need to work with them. We do, we're not going to expect them to maintain a brand new basin um, right. that they weren't required to do. The town in its whole is required to do it, and this was the best and cheapest option at the time. Okay. Um, but yes, they are still going to have to maintain mowing on the exterior. We're going to work with um, Barton to design this basin so it's basically no maintenance. Okay. So we don't have to actually mow in here. It's going to be high grasses, um, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Okay. And will that result in an MOU with the HOA? Yes. Okay. All right. Yes, it will. A memorandum of understanding. So, yep. A, a, a contract that would identify what every party's responsibilities are related to its maintenance. And this will have a lifespan of 25 to 30 years, so I believe that would be an appropriate time frame for maintenance. Okay. But we'll work with that very closely with them. So that would decrease their, uh, their, their maintenance fees? Absolutely. Significantly? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so you're, and it's going to increase their property values because this is going to be a gorgeous basin. Um, this is not going to be a bed of weeds, going to be flowers. Um, but we'll show you some more pictures. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. So um, here's just an example of the cross section plan of the proposed basin. As you can see, it would be a mix of. Um, oh, one, one second. I, I, missed, I missed a slide. The basin will be planted with three types of native seeds. Uh, seed mixes appropriate for the ecotype, region, and functionality of the, the basin. The planting proposal is meant to provide a low maintenance, um, ecologically functional planting regime, which would attract various pollinators and aid in drainage with long rooting. Plants could reach up to eight feet tall. Small trees and shrubs would range from six feet to 25 feet tall. Root systems could reach down to 12 feet or more. Um, the tiered slopes would feature a native no mow grass mix. So here is the cross section plan of the proposed basin. As you can see, it will be a mix of stone, which is in the bottom there, um, sand, rain garden mix, topsoil, and plantings. So here's an example of the plantings that will be placed inside the basin. Uh, these plants can thrive in wet and dry conditions. The various plants bloom at different times of the year and provide for the birds, bees, and butterflies. Um, one thing to note that the basin's actually starting to fail as it, as it sits now. It's actually a dry basin, but it sits wet most of the time what, after a rain event. It's supposed to drain within uh, 24 to 48 hours, and it's well over 72 to 84 hours. So that's one thing was um, noted. Uh, as for our, our budget, um, as I previously uh, stated, we estimated restoration costs for the current permit term before between 256 and 375 or 376. Um, since increasing the amount of tree plantings, eliminating the need to restore the Northgate Basin, we are now estimating costs, re reduced costs at between 250,000 and 300,000. Um, here is the proposed restoration budget for the current permit term. Again, I budgeted for a worst case scenario um, with no grants. Any remaining funds will be used for projects in the next permit term. Um, as you can see, I'm requesting 75,000 from the capital um, reserve transfer in the next couple months, um, minus the tree plantings. I'm gonna be requesting 75,000 in fiscal year 21 and 22. And then worst case scenario is 250,000, which will give us a approximate 3,600 restoration balance. Um, and I put a note here at the bottom. It's important to note that this is just for restoration requirements only. This has nothing to do with all of our other um, requirements for educational, um, fixing emergency leaks, uh, anything, uh, storm drain inlet repairs. So this is just uh, the restoration requirements. And that's my presentation. I have a question. Sure. What's the difference between that and the bio, bio, uh, bio filter system? Like a bioretention basin? Mm -hmm. This is very, very similar, but cheaper. Um, bioretention basins, they do maintain uh, water at all times. We wanted to avoid that because um, there's mosquito problems. Right. And this drains, like I said, between 24 to 48 hours. So there will not be any problems with mosquitoes. We do have bio uh, retention ponds in the town now. Is dollar, the dollar store has one? Oh, Southgate's a wet pond. Um, the Mother Seton School. Mother Seton School is a bio retention basin. Uh, the dollar store. 
That's a rain garden. That's a rain garden. How about the behind the post office? That's basically that's in pretty rough shape. It's a dry basin. Dry basin. Yeah. There's the one in uh, Brookfield, which is a three a, a three step system. Yeah. Um, it's just dry basin. I know in Pembroke Woods there is an HOA requirement. Funding gets set aside for the swales um, in the HOA in the annual HOA fees. Um, is there anything similar that exists with this neighborhood for the maintenance of this? Uh, for, unfortunately, the treasurer, absolutely yeah. not. That we are only 17 homes. It was originally two HOAs. The properties on the other side of Silo Hill, they for some reason were able to be disbanded and are no longer responsible to contributing. So because we're 17 homes with dues of $10 a month, there's no money. Okay, thank you. And ultimately, the town is responsible um, for the, these basins. So if something would happen to the Silo Hill Homeowners Association, they would belly up and go. We're ultimately responsible for every single basin in this municipality. Is that also true for the swales? Yeah, absolutely. Since that was built into their plan. Interesting. Okay, yep. thank you. Any other questions? I, I'm just curious. I don't know if I missed the 50000 for tree plantings, that doesn't have to do with the, the stream link. Sure. Mr. Pre Mr. President, yes. Did you ever come up with these? Um, yes. Can you come, come up, up here and, and, and I know you didn't sign up for this. <laughs> Julie, you don't have to so talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Leslie Fry. I live Mr. in. Sweeney, I would ask that both of them identify themselves for the minutes, please. Okay. Um, can you both come up? Julia Moore, treasurer for the Flat Run Community Association. They might have some more questions for you. <laughs> come on up. Okay. <laughs> There you go. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Can you repeat your question? And my name is Leslie Fry. Sorry, I'm in um, Flat Run Court. I'm just curious what the 50000 for the tree plantings is, um, if that's related at all to the Streamlink program that you mentioned that is grant. So what's the – so is that for the swale that it would cost $50,000 to plant trees in that area? No. So we have um, proposed 30 acres of tree plantings. Uh, 50000 is going to be the town's match for the grant for Streamlink. So Streamlink is going to apply for the DNR grant, Department of Natural Resources grant, and that's our match, our required match. It's separate from the Silo Hill. Okay. Yeah, completely separate. Okay. Yep. But we are going to have trees in this basin too. That's just, that just shows the MS4. Yes. The whole, the whole picture. I was trying to think how it's, it's, some of that grant, those trees could go in if that was coming out mm -hmm. of the swale. Unfortunately not. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for uh, the town planner? Anybody? I have one more question about the... Can you come up here? <laughs> you really can't hear me? No, I know. Um, they need to hear you on the microphone. So to develop an MOU with our HOA, we'll have to have, I'm, I'm guessing, a, a meeting with the HOA. We're not a very solid HOA at this point. Um, we have a lot of... People were trying to get back together for this, knowing that this is coming. But um, can we get like an anticipated timeline for what it would look like once we would sure. meet? So um, if approved tonight, we're going to start the grant process. So we once approval from the mayor and Kathy, I'll reach out to our attorney and draft the MOU. And then hopefully, I'd say within a year, six months to a year, best case scenario, six months. Okay, and in the MOU, we'll discuss that sidewalk and... No. Okay. The sidewalk's completely separate. Um, that's our, that's our responsibility yeah. Anyway. Okay. So the only thing that's going to be in that MOU is that the town will be responsible for the b interior of the basin itself okay. for, for 25 to 30 years. And that's just maintenance, correct? Just maintenance. Okay. Thanks. Mr. Golden? Yes. Just a random question related to the sidewalk piece, assuming... You know, the sidewalk needs repair. Um, would there be any grant money if it were a permeable sidewalk surface versus uh, concrete impermeable? The, the sidewalk's already there. Right. Is it in need of repair, though? That's what it, what it sounds like. It's not. No. It's, no. Okay. So there's future projects planned for North Seton that may include sidewalk and part of the North Seton water line will go right through it. Mm -hmm. So ultimately that will be part of another project, just not part of this one. Okay. Right. Yeah, we're, I'm actually going to apply for a North Seton Avenue grant for a green street. 
So um, hopefully we're going to work in tandem with the North Seton water line repairs. So it's cheaper for the town. Um, try to save some money and implement some green infrastructure. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. Mr. Ritz. <clears throat> we're talking about this tonight proceeding, potentially voting on this this evening. What is the time frame, uh, Maryland, um, for the MS4? So our permit term ends in 2023. Okay. So we have to have 20 acres of impervious um, treated by 2023. And if we don't, then significant fines can apply. Okay. Um, t 20 acres is 20% of our impervious throughout the town boundary. So this is to get the ball rolling for applying for grants. Mm -hmm. um, Cause you know, grants take a while so that we can meet the 2023. It's actually the deadline is October of 2023. 2023. Mm -hmm. okay. I know Maryland, you know, they, we, there are requirements and restrictions put on us that we have to pony up funds. This is one of them. And this is one of them. To make it very clear to the public, this is an unfunded state and federal mandate. We have no say in this whatsoever. We have to do it. There's been multiple, multiple lawsuits over the entire United States, and every single one of them's lost. Understood. I just wanted that on record that Absolutely. You know, it's, it's Maryland um, mandate, and it's just... Kind of rotten it's timing with our mm -hmm. current water infrastructure. Yeah. I just got two things. Number one, the the residents in Silo Hill, do you see any problems with that? Either the, the concept of it, are you okay with it? I mean, I don't want to vote for something that you all... Well, we can't speak for the 17 homes because we haven't met on it and agreed upon it. But personally, as a homeowner, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Agree. Thank and you I think our intent is once the plan is to a full plan is to certainly bring it to them so they can see it and appreciate all the work that's going to go into it. And this oh, is we actually appreciate it quite a bit. Zach has been phenomenal. That makes it easy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the, the, the second thing is after 2023. It starts all over again. It's going to start over again. Another five-year permit term, and we're going to have another 20 percent. A little town like us could eventually, which we already have, run out of places to plant trees. What the hell do we do? So, you know, I mean, we're having to we're having to annex land in now to do an unfunded mandate by the state of Maryland. So this <laughs> this is what I call the low hanging fruit projects. This is the easiest and the cheapest projects that we have. And mark my words, this is going to increase significantly over time. This is the easiest per permit term we'll ever have. Because we are going to run out of places to plant right. trees I, I, and we'll I have think, to go to uh, other projects. And, and Mayor, this is going to be back to you. I think you're going to have to go to Annapolis and, and say, what, what do we do? Right. You know, how, how does a small town, they're forcing us to, to annex property in and spending money and planting trees where we don't have any place to plant them? I already got one in front of my house. I didn't want. I don't want I, another one. That's uh, why I have two of them on Main Street. You know. I do have a question <laughs> too. Um, can, can the mountain be used for plantings? No. No. We that's can't plant on our watershed. No, because it's not technically in the town boundary. Not, uh, right. We'd have to annex that. That's, that's why we. That's one of the reasons we chose this company or recommended this company because they have such a great high rate of, of obtaining grants and. Um, I can't speak high enough for Zach and Maddie on their their right. diligence on getting these grants, and I have the utmost Absolutely. confidence in them. If the grants there, they're going to find it, and we're going to get as much as we possibly can. Um, and we'll keep going after all the low low hanging fruit. Is that what you called it? As as often as we can. The next step, really, a lot of municipalities that have had permits longer than we have, they're working on stream restoration. So in every single plan that's approved by the town, if there's a stream um, in its boundary. I'm putting a forest conservation or a stream restoration easement on that stream. So just in case in the future, I'm trying to plan in the future because it's going to happen at one point. Yeah. We're going to have to do stream restorations, and they're a million dollars a mile. It's and it's expensive. Yes. Yes. Um, this was the the annexation with the sisters was the second option. We approached them on another piece of land, and we we were working through that, and this this looked like a better better thing. Uh, there was an opportunity here in town, but uh, Zach has done a great job, like with rudders. There, there is a stream Correct. right a stream. behind there, yeah. yeah, flat uh, segment of uh, flat run, and we're we're working on that. So, uh, we're trying to eclipse that all into, you know, into the plan, and it 
I know we want to save that deer bay, uh, it's, uh, but it, it's very important to us. So let's it, go ahead. Is the park and ride in the, the new park and ride without being the? Yes, that would be in the boundary. Um, you think we could probably plant everything we could around that? Yeah, potentially. Sure. <laughs> Hang out. Sure. Um, just to put this in the back of your mind, I know you never want to talk about this kind of things, but every municipality that has a stormwater mandate is going towards a stormwater fee. So that's something to think about in the future. We, um, the mayor, Kathy and I avoided that at this permit term, but I can't promise you in the future, I'm not going to bring that back to you as we're out of money. That's not the same as the rain fee. Yeah. No. Is that the famous rain tax? Rain tax. Um, it's not a tax. It's okay. a fee. <laughs> it's a ring tax. It's a ring tax. <laughs> so, bring that up in three years. I don't know. No, it's not. Don't worry about it right now. We're we're trying to save the town as much money as possible, and hopefully, we'll get as much grant money as possible. If we keep budgeting this, we can push it back another five years. So, and the fee would be applied to new construction. Is that correct? No, it's not correct. So that would be applied to every single property in town. There's different. The Gettysburg Borough, for example, just enacted this fee. Um, churches, everything that's typically exempt from taxes are required to pay the fee. And what would be the fee for a single family home, for example? Or, uh, between. In, in Gettysburg. I, I don't. Oh, in Gettysburg, it's between 50 and and $100. Miss Nail actually owns property in Gettysburg Borough, so she might be able to better answer. $100. Around $100. $100. Okay. For, An annually. Assuming. Annually. So it's just another way of getting away to say we didn't raise taxes, but we're throwing another fee at you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where they put that on your, your uh, bill? For... They put it on their sewer bill. Yeah, I was going to say they had to put it on the sewer and water bill. Yep. Just like garbage. But we're going to avoid it at all costs. No pun okay. intended. Any other questions? I'm ready to vote. Um, but it, we we do need to. You can go back and sit down, but you need to give up. Give your name and your. She can't pay. Oh, well, go ahead and shout it out. Okay, roughly that's not a lot of land there in that sediment control. Roughly, how many trees are you figuring on now get in there? I don't. I don't even want to give you an estimate because I don't know the exact. That was just I a. Don't need an exact. This is a rough guess. It was a basic concept plan. It was just for them to get in the door. Okay. As you can see there, I'd say maybe ten. I mean, I don't want to. Tell you ten and it's going to be twenty, or tell you ten and it's going to be five. In my backyard. Yeah, the fence is in my backyard, but that, the trees don't bother me. I was just wondering because there's not a lot of land there, really. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we're not putting. I know, I yeah. Know. You want a lot of trees? Yeah. Okay, we'll do a lot of trees. We all border the fence, so we'll get some trees right there. <laughs> Oh, it's great to see something. Some everybody. We want to. <laughs> yeah, we want to set up a meeting with you before we get the engineer plans going. People agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, any other questions? Audience? Commissioners? Mr. Sweeney, do you need a motion? Uh, uh, yes. Yes, we do need a motion to accept the uh, the MS4 stormwater. Project. I propose the motion to approve the contract to conduct Silo Hill Stormwater Management Basin Restoration. For a maximum of 250000 For a maximum of 250000 A second. Motion has been made by Commissioner Burns, second by Commissioner Davis. Has there any, any, any other discussion before we vote? Did we have the name of the company in there? Do we need the name of the company in there? It, probably. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't hurt. hurt. Wouldn't hurt. Uh, so let's start, try it again. Page 35. <laughs> yep. okay. You'd have to take his, he has to take his second bond. You have to take your mission back to redo. I take right? my mission back. Is that back. what you have to do? Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Okay. You take it back? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, for uh, the motion to approve the contract by Barton and Long Ice to conduct Silo Hill Stormwater Management Basin Restoration for a maximum of $250,000. Now you want me to give it back, don't you? There you go. Yeah, a second. Motion's been made by Commissioner Burns, second by Commissioner Davis. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Aye. I voted aye. <laughs> okay.
Motion carries five to zero. Just for the record, though, I did vote aye. However, um, as a, someone who is personally, um, I don't like excessive regulation. Um, I think we're going down that 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 path. Um, yes, it'll beautify the town. Um, yes, it'll help us in the long run. But I'm also thinking of all the other concerns that we have right now too. Um, money uh, that we need to be spending on future as well, which is our water system. Thank you. Okay, and agenda item number two, and then we jumped around. Agenda item number two. Thank you all so for coming in. The, thank, you. Uh, thank you. Review and approval of the wayside exhibits. All right. So at the last meeting, we brought forth the um, four wayside exhibit signs for consideration. Um, again, as part of the FY 2020 Maryland Heritage Areas grant, the town was awarded 12032 to create the four signs. Um, Long-term goal was to create a historic walking uh, tour in town. I'm not doing it. Um, the one change, I wasn't I'm not doing anything. Do you guys need the slides? I've seen them. Uh, Chronicle Press was the one slide, or the one exhibit, not slide, that um, the board sought changes on. So um, we sent the uh, requested changes to the contractor who, um, and I'll highlight, they removed the founded date of the Emmitsburg Chronicle and added published by Chronicle Press. They changed the ceased publication date to mid-1970s. They removed the label of linotype machine in the picture of the elder family. They removed the photo of a New York Times worker composing a print using the linotype machine. And they added a label for the newspaper that says the Emmitsburg Chronicle was founded in 1879 and published under several owners, publishers, and newspaper titles, as well as adding um, some additional pictures on this right-hand side there. Alrighty, we need, um, I need a motion to accept the Wayside Exhibits as presented with the corrections made on the Chronicle Press Exhibit. Are, are we doing all four this evening? Yeah, all four of them need to be approved. You can approve them all as one. Um, there Sorry, were no Mr. requested President. changes on the other ones. That's why I didn't go over them. I'll make the motion to uh, accept the uh, Wayside exhibits as presented, just so we can get uh, questions. Uh, is there a second? I second. Motion has been made by Commissioner Davis, second by Commissioner Burns. Discussion? Commissioner O'Donnell. Yes, sir. I, I'm nitpicking, but there's, there's a, a fact here that I'm modestly concerned about. Um, radios were sold commercially in the 1920s. It says, before the 1930s, the newspaper was the only source Americans had to get the news. I'd say, I don't know, I'd, I'd go before the mid-1920s, number one. And number two, I'd say the newspaper was the primary source, perhaps. It wasn't the singular source you got your news from. No offense, Mr. Fulton. But beyond that, that's the only thing I would give consideration to modifying. Um, but I'm, I'm open to anything other board members have thoughts upon. I don't have any problem with the change. Can I just inquire, uh, uh, ma'am, where, where are we on the scheduling to meet the dead? Uh, we're behind. So I, that, that possibly should have been addressed at the last meeting. I'm, thank you for your comments, I sir. No, this was, this, this. Um, that section wasn't changed. Yeah. One change, but this is the only one that we had questions on changing. Everything else was right, fine. Right, correct. If we're behind, what does that mean? So, so we, when we submit a grant, we submit a grant timeline to meet to mirror their funding 
um, and we submitted a timeline similar to what we did last year. And as we start pushing things back, we're not going to be able to submit our re the production is going to be behind, our reports are going to get behind, and we have to submit our final report by a deadline. And so everything starts getting pushed back, and we may not meet that deadline of when the final report is due. When is it due? I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. Hmm? The mid product report's due this month. Okay. Um, I mean, if there's a word change if, with approval, if the board will approve with the change that we can send that to the contractor um, to make a, if there's a wording change. Yeah, that's what I'm suggesting. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, that's, I don't see a problem with that with the, board, uh, with the uh, contractor. I, I doubt, I doubt it. I mean, I, ha I had some, some concerns and I do appreciate everybody giving the opportunity to, to, to look into those. Um, I think though what Commissioner O'Donnell is saying, I, I do agree, and it actually goes in with the whole, it's hard to read up here, but when it talks about the family, um, they purchased the building in 1925. That's when they took over the paper. So if you talk about the 20s there, and then even mention the 20s down below, and then, um, and then, and then with the, the radio, then they, it, it, it kind of all goes together then, you know. Um, that makes sense too. And then I, I do appreciate the fact that they touched more on the building itself and the school and they were able to dig up another photo. Um, I, I do appreciate that. It's a shame we weren't able to get more information on the Chronicle's history. There's that little blurb down in the corner. So my, um, my thinking is on it in the future, I know that the mayor has had discussions with the company and has ideas for potential wayside signs. I would like to see one uh, touching, touching more on the, uh, the presidential aspect that one of the former, um, prior to the elder family, um, Sterling Gault was the editor of the paper and he, he brought President Woodrow Wilson to town. I mean, that, that's a big, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, there's also someone tipped me off. I'm investigating it right now, I'm not coming up with any leads, but there's a rumor that President Kennedy came through town in 1963 and stopped at Krause's and had um, some ice cream. So um, if anyone has any information on that, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, you know, the presidential part of it too. So like another sign. So if you have any ideas for signs, I, I, be, I would be very interested as to what we're um, looking at. Okay. Going forward. Very good. President Clinton was here. Commissioner Sweeney. And, and President Clinton was at the, the carriage house. And Would the fire, fire house. Yeah. Commissioner Rhodes, Commissioner Donald, if it was changed to before the early 1920s, the newspaper was the only source Americans had to get their news. Is that better along the timeline that you're looking for? The only, I would say, um, before the early 1920s, okay, uh, the newspaper, I would still say it was the main source. It's not the singular source. People talk to each other. Things get posted on walls. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm being persnickety, I realize, but it's... Or what about the newspaper? Was an overstatement of the, yeah. It's an overstatement of the fact. It was one of the primary sources Americans Perfect. had. Yep. That, that'd be, that, I would go wholeheartedly with that. Okay, so the simple change would be Correct. before the 1920s, the newspaper was, the pr was one of the primary sources was American. a how about this how, was, was a, a primary, primary source a being one of a few there we go hmm. so you're changing the only to a primary yes yes sir. 1920s everybody okay with that i i, I am yep. i am my motion still good yes everything's still good so All far right. So, Mr. Mayor, do you have any ideas for next year? Can I the ask one question? Yes. So, before, I want to just make sure I have it right. Before the early 1920s, the newspaper was a primary source Americans had to get their news? Yes. Yes. Okay. Please. It was the only, because they're saying the radio was here. Probably the primary source. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know what they're saying. Radio. I just want to make sure it sounded right. I don't care. The primary, yeah. Mm. It wasn't the only. I, I don't think any of us was here other than the mayor, maybe. 
Yeah, Mary, how what was it? What, what was it back then? How did you get your? Yeah, oh, what great. did you get your news with? <laughs> you were there. I, I waved at you twice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Movie theater strike. All in favor of the motion and the amendment and, and the changes made to the uh, wording. I'm try, trying to answer. Can no, I? Uh, Commissioner Ritz had a question. Uh, one one of them was the uh, John Armstrong. Uh, Perfect. I like location, that. Location okay. uh, down on East Main Street. Another is working with the museum on a uh, wayside exhibit for the uh, uh, the work out here, the work of art out here. We're okay. working with the Daughters of Charity on a couple of them, and and, and the train, the the train that came uh, stopped right across. Emmitsburg Railroad. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that, those are where we are now. We're trying to get um, sort of site specific. That's a great story about the presidents, but. Where there were, there was another story about Mamie Eisenhower stopping at uh, at the, the Van Brakel house. Uh, you couldn't the get grandmother the down, down at um, it was it was covered federal, by federal in uh, North Seton and, and admired her. Her name was Mamie too, and admired her flowers. So, but they, there are, there's plenty of room in the future. We got things to do. We're we're just trying to tie them together with the museum. And the uh, Daughters of Charity and, and bringing in locations up and down the street, going this way and that way. But Since we weren't able to get the presidential piece on this, I, I would like to see it addressed some, somehow in the future. And, and not can, just focus well, on sure. President Wilson, but like, you know, a presidential sure. um, history in general. Um, well, I like the, where you had uh, President Kennedy stopping at, at Krause's. And that, that's a location thing. And Clinton was at the firehouse. The, the working the firehouse. on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pictures, too. Frank Davis was there too. I saw him. Yeah. That. <laughs> I was there. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Motion carries. Thank you. Five to zero. Thank you. Now we are at updates on the employee handbook. Everything else was so cloudy. All right. So. Um, Michelle works closely with our insurance companies in every year we have to we have an audit of our insurance and they send you ways that you can save money on your insurance and they've sent this to us the past couple of years um, and we wanted to look at ways that we could save um, on our insurance overall and so basically we want to add changes to the employee handbook per, per our insurance provider which is legit um, each year they send us a mem uh, send members a loss control credit survey in May. Um, and the survey is part of a plan to return surplus from the primary liability pool to members with exceptional loss control processes in place. So basically what we're trying to do is increase our loss control processes. If we score more than 90% on the survey, we receive a credit on our insurance, which reduces our primary liability premium. In 2020, $300,000 was allocated to members um, that had the exceptional loss control pro uh, processes in place. Um, we did not get a portion of this money because we didn't score high enough on our survey. We scored 86% last year, um, missing only three questions that would have put us at the 90%. Um, with these updates, they um, will help us score 100% on the survey and make us eligible for the insurance credit. Um, just a little note, legit reserves the right to request and review member documentation, a proof of certain loss control efforts as outlined in the survey, which is why we need it. Even if we practice it, we need it written in our handbook. Um, so a couple of the things we wanted to add, um, which is on page 37, is a defensive driving course, which we did start doing um, to some of our employees. Um, they're offered in person via legit or online via the National Safety Council Defensive Driving Course. It's four hours long and it's $40 a person. Um, it requires a defensive driving course every four years for all employees that operate town-owned vehicles and or equipment. We, our goal is to do three employees each year. We have 11 total employees that drive vehicles. Um, requires all new employees to take a basic driver course within six months of employment either online or in person, and it requires any employees that have been involved in a preventable or non-preventable collision take a driving or defensive driving course, either online or in person. And then uh, preventative maintenance clause requires vehicle and equipment preventative maintenance occur in 
in accordance with manufacturer's guidelines based on miles or hours of use, we already do that. It's just writing it in our handbook. Um, require a diary or log showing preventative maintenance completed, date work was completed, and mileage on all town equipment and vehicles. Again, we already do that as well. And require maintenance files for each town equipment vehicle reflecting schedule and non-scheduled maintenance performance. Your director of public works already takes care of all that. Um, handheld cell phones require all employees follow Maryland state law, which prohibits the use of handheld devices while operating a motor vehicle or other equipment in government services and state the town will provide hands-free devices or microphones to assist drivers to operate a vehicle or other equipment and need access to their cell phone for work-related reasons. Um, that would be uh, maybe some Bluetooth devices for some of the vehicles, um, not all of them. Do you have other ways you can save money for the insurance? Uh, these are the recommended ones as far as the vehicular. These were the only three areas that we were missing. On a vehicular, how, yep. you don't have one for safety? This is, they, these were the only three areas that we were missing for okay. your general premium liability, and they were related to vehicle use. Mm -hmm. Everything else we scored, okay. you know. Um, page 39 just shows basically what I highlighted. It's kind of hard to tell with the font. Um, basically adding the defensive driving course, the, the prohibit, prohibitation of handheld devices, and outlining the vehicle maintenance. So I just need the board to approve those changes to the handbook, please. I need a motion to, to approve the handbook changes. I make a motion to approve the Town of Emmitsburg Employee Handbook. Vehicle safety change? Vehicle safety changes. I second. Motion has been made by Commissioner O'Donnell, second by Commissioner Ritz. Any other discussion? Just a question, yes, sir. Mr. O'Donnell. Um, the the language here i'm sorry if i missed this this was provided by the insurer yes terrific okay so what we're placing into the okay. handbook is from it's, the insurer it's, from it's recommendations from the insurer and then written by our hr consultant terrific. to comply with it great okay thank you and just that's one, it sir thank you just one question again because uh, i missed mr ritz how much do we save then um, well, I, I don't know exactly the dollar amount. I know that all I know is they returned three hundred thousand dollars to the participate uh, participating municipalities. I think we estimated anywhere between two and three thousand. Yeah, from my understanding, whoever gets the survey and gets above ninety percent, they split it between all those municipalities, um, and it's usually a couple thousand. Okay, that's great. Every little bit helps. No, that's that's. That's great. I mean, because at first thought, I think I've, I brought it up at the last time. Like, wait, we already have a valid driver's license. Why do you need this? But it, it mm -hmm. sounds like it's a beneficial. Um, for insurance, yeah. Yeah, for insurance. Any other discussion? Nope. No, sir. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Motion carries 5-0. Agenda item number seven, Waynesboro waterline. Update for consideration. Microphone. Yes, thank you. So uh, we're finally able to have a course of action to replace the small section of water line that is underneath Waynesboro Pike. Um, we believe that this is a uh, one of the contributing factors to some of the brown water complaints that we have had. Um, this in, in um, cooperation with the pressure reducing valves, um, I think is gonna go a long way. So we finally were able to uh, find a company out of Chambers, or Chambersburg, Waynesboro, um, Valley Directional Boring, who will be able to bore underneath the road. Um, they'll pull the HDPE pipe through, and they'll fuse proper connections on each end to adapt to the, black, or the back of the ductile iron pipe. Their estimate is 8,800, and then Mid-Atlantic Mid will come back in and tie into the existing six-inch pipe at the fire hydrant and make the reduction back to two inches on both sides of the road. Um, the total cost of the project is $24,300. I just need um, board approval to proceed with the work. And once it's approved, uh, they're getting on our, our, we can get on their schedule uh, ASAP. I'll make a motion we approve the uh, water line upgrade for Waynesboro Pike. Motion's been made by Commissioner Davis, there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner O'Donnell. Any other discussion? Just just one. Mr. Ritz. Um, the high-density polyethylene, What it, is that used instead of PVC? 
it's um I was hoping you didn't ask me what it yes was. it's a it's a black yes pipe it's um high pressure pipe to and then i don't know how else to say um we use c right now everybody's going to see 900 which is pvc plastic it's as heavy as steel um that's what they're all going to now to keep the just everything from corroding on the inside you don't have to rely on them on it yeah because they're pvc but this will help this will help up there and uh, the, the, you won't have to worry about the copper lines so it's easier to, to fix with the compression coupling instead of flaring it and i'm working with two inch coppers a mess right no understood i was just curious as to what, <coughs> it was a different type of uh it's very easy polymer. to work with the plastic okay. it comes in a big roll yeah. mr sweeney yes a question for yourself so yeah. As a professional, again, on the inside of the industry, you're comfortable with this and you feel this oh, yeah. meets all the demands that we're looking for to it upgrade? should fix, Mr. The, the, the houses that are on that piece out there should fix all their problems. Terrific. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any other discussion? Nope. Yes, sir. All in favor? Mr. Burns? Okay. All in favor of the motion, okay. please say aye. 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 Any nays? Motion carries 5 to 0. Oh my God! We got done. Set the agenda for the next meeting. Be before, Mr. President. Let me do this first. Yes. Before we get to the agenda, can I just throw in one thing I totally missed during the the wayside thing? Just a comment. Okay. Um, I know that the four signs, it was presented to us when initially by the the vendor, the 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 company that creates the signs, that he did a um, he he gave them to Mr. Mike Hillman to do a a uh, historical fact check on. As it turned out, Mr. Hillman only got three out of the four, and the, the, the one missing is the one we had all the questions on. Okay. So I just ask that going forward, if they use a historical um, expert, whether it's Mr. Hillman, anyone, um, that they're able to actually review all the signs. That's just, just a common um, courtesy. Okay. So. He's, he's done seven out of the eight, or how many we've done. Uh, Mr. Hillman, I, I, don't, I don't know how you missed on that one. I really don't. I, I don't know. Just going forward, I think that would yeah. solve some problems. Always. Thank you. All right. That's all I have. May, may I make a setting agenda? May yes, I, Mr. Statement? Mayor. Uh, we have been uh, we're notified today We, we had, uh, that one of our employees will be leaving. It's uh, one of our uh, uh, field employees out the water. Is that correct? Water and sewer. And, and, um, uh, we're he's leaving for more money for his family and we're finding out that our what we may have uh, our scale of attracting uh, uh, it's very competitive market out there now it's shrinking the, the, the available is drying up so uh, we may have to we'd like to have we didn't think this person was leading until earlier this week this week and then uh, we wanted to have a little slot in the, with the next budget. So um, uh, we, we just need to rethink and really get going on this. But we, well, I, don't, I don't know, it's very hard to attract and very competitive, especially when you get into licensure and uh, you know, the water and the sewer licenses. And uh, Kathy, you want to speak? You speak better than that, but we're it's very competitive. Market you don't out there. you require them to have both before they come, or do you, did they get them within a year after they're here? Um, Jacob Fisher is the one that's leaving. Um, he did not have his license upon the, when he was first hired. He currently has his water license. Um, he has two water licenses because our, our staff's <laughs> required to have two um, based off the type of plant. Um, the sewer license he did not obtain. Um, your other operator, Wayne Scher, he does have both his licenses. I don't know if he had them before he came here or not. Um, Jared, who is your lead operator, he held both licenses when he was hired. Um, but what we're finding is um, we are not competitive as far as our water and sewer operators are um, concerned, especially when they hold the licenses. Um, they're being coveted you know, by other municipalities. You know, Jacob's not leaving to go to another municipality. Um, he, he got an offer that the town just couldn't match. So um, I think going forward, when we hired, we, when we advertised for Jared, we only had three interviews. It's not a market where you see a lot of people applying that we need to, right now we're reaching out to MML to get what 
other municipalities are paying their operators, um, but we need to become competitive so we can get qualified people. As we're making the improvements to our water and sewer infrastructure, we want to hire qualified people that are going to stay. Yeah. Could, could I ask that we do a study across the board and compare all of our employees to mm -hmm. the other municipalities in Emmitsburg? I'm sure there's some we're paying too much, like the superintendent. But uh, uh, superintendent, superintendent, you know. Uh, no, um, yes, no. that's something that's a service and, uh, that's been offered by no. our HR consultant. <laughs> he's watching. I know he's watching, so that'll be. I have a flat tire in the morning, but uh, uh, to make sure we have good people and we want to keep them, yeah. and just to make sure that we are. It's very competitive. There's more jobs than there are um, people that want to work, so. Um, we will keep, we'll be advertising as fairly soon for at least one and then we did have the intentions of asking for an additional one with the new uh, fiscal year because we may need to do something with the budget if we you know if we see that we're running into which is coming up yeah so if we could and especially with the, the special scrutiny we're giving to water and sewer we we, we really need to get top people in here and maybe we don't have no problem and we do have a, uh, some uh, extra money so mm -hmm. to cover that okay. okay um agenda items yes okay. i have for administrative business i have a couple of items i have um for administrative ice item nicholas lowe who is an aspiring eagle scout he has a project that he would like to take, bring to the board for permission. He would like to constru construct an all accessible um, picnic table and bench at the um, all inclusive playground. So he would, he's gonna make that presentation at the meeting on March, March 1st, 2nd, okay. Uh, also under admin, we have um, a proclamation making April 4th, 2020, Arbor Day for consideration. We have proclamation declaring April 2020 to be Fair Housing Month. Okay. And then I can do all yours under admin. Can't Are we I? having tree planting on April 4th? Yeah, um, I have um, then to agenda items. Number one would be the approval of resolution 2001R, Community Development Block Grant Citizen Participation Plan for consideration. Approval of resolution 20-02R, Community Development Block Grant Residential Anti-Displacement and Relocation Assistance Plan for consideration. These are all requirements of the um, community legacy. Community, okay. And then approval of resolution 20-05R, community development block grant requirement prohibiting excessive police force for nonviolent civil rights demonstrations for consideration. Again, that's a requirement. It's a federal requirement. Try that one again. <laughs> it's a civil rights agreement. Prohibiting excessive police force for nonviolent civil rights demonstrations for consideration. It's a federal requirement to apply for the uh, grant. I asked the same thing. It seems not to be kidding me. Um, then I have um, an amendment to the pool contract for year 2020 for consideration. Amendment, yes. Because we're in a three-year contract, right? Correct. Okay. It's basically because um, school is going back in session. There's a reduction in the number of calendar days and then the changes to minimum wage. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, update to the small cell ordinance for discussion. Discussion. I'm trying. I appreciate that. I, no, I do. Honestly, I'm not being facetious. This, this is... <laughs> Um, it's a freight train coming our way. Uh, the FY19 budget transfer transfers to capital fund for consideration. Um, and then the approval of the pool house mural for consideration.
That's it. Related to the pool house mural, is that grant funded? It's partially grant funded, partially town funded. Um, it's working with the uh, Frederick County Tourism Arts Council, excuse me. Um, this was a project that was started, um, I believe, last budget year. Mm -hmm. uh, monies were sent aside for it to uh, the pool building needs painted anyway sure. yep. and with the renovations that were grant funded and um, the interior uh, renovations that are grant funded once they wrap up okay so we'll see some artwork or something in the proposal is that correct yes okay. Thank you. it's gorgeous by the way <laughs> absolutely gorgeous you only got the grant funding from them uh, we yeah we've got a proposal oh you have a proposal to them it took us, Thanks. it took um, the Lions Club four times before they even gave us a thousand dollars. That was a tourism count. Oh yeah, they're tough. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, for the agenda items, we have um, resolution 20-01 for our community block grant, right? Consideration. 20-2 uh, is the second one. Mm -hmm. Community block grant, 20-05. Mm -hmm. Amendment to the pool contract mm -hmm. is four. Small sale is five. Mm -hmm. FYI, 19 budget transfers is six. Mm -hmm. And approval of the uh, pool mural is seven. And that's all the agenda items. Anybody else have an agenda item they want to put on? That's Hopefully and then you have the three admin items. Yeah, I got okay. three. I haven't got to them. I was asking if they had any more. Okay. They all should go pretty quick, right? <laughs> yeah, they, have, they should go pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. And in uh -huh. administration, we have uh, um, uh, Arbor Day. Are, we, are, they, are they doing tree plantings on Arbor Day the 4th? Yes. Did you already get the trees? Uh, how much money do you need for the trees? Send you a number. Send me a number. And do we have a location? We were looking into potentially. I have a meeting tomorrow. I could get some money from the Legion. Spot. I also have the Lions Park. Club donated the trees last year. Per Miss. Um, um, the area, yes. Amy. Yes. And is the uh, rugby club coming to help mm. plant, Mr. Mayor? We haven't heard from her yet. We haven't extended the invitation, but we will. Okay. She's very, very high demand to get her again. No, I'm at the rugby. Rugby club? No, they're. Are they away? They're, uh, they're traveling, I think, but oh. we'll, we'll try to get them here. Mr. Sweeney? Yes. An administrative business item. Um, the distribution of funds related to the parking meters for the Lions Club, the food it's bank, and for the friends, is that? It's already, it's in your packet. So we're? It's all done. Okay. Yes. So what does the organization need to do to collect? That's, this is new territory for the friends. Uh, just send me an email tomorrow. Terrific. Or call me tomorrow. <coughs> okay. I'll have to get with Cole. Okay. You know what the breakdown was? Yeah, yeah it's, right. it's in the packet. Oh, I didn't even see it. What page was it? Uh, I have two quick questions. Yes. Um, just looking ahead, April, I know it's before our budget discussions. Do you think it would be, um, I don't know what our plate's going to be like for April. I'd, I'd still like to revisit that traffic um, square, pedestrian thing, maybe, maybe for April. Yeah. I don't want to do it in March. I don't see it. Yeah, I don't see a problem with it. Just make sure you uh, I have enough. I was going to put it on there because I'm getting a lot of complaints about it. Email or remind me. Yeah. You Good think? Luck. I mean, I. What's it about? No, April's We've, okay, but we got to move on it. We got to try. To I want to get it in we before have. the budget. We've sent letters, so it's not like the, we, the, we haven't done anything, but it's time to try again. We have control over that. It's that's no, state. it's state highway. All we can do is keep asking. The mayor and I have both sent letters, and we've both been rejected. And that includes the width of the road, where people are just obviously cutting around against the wall. No, it's it's technically <coughs> not against. So, a police officer question: At the traffic light, there's no designated turning lane, correct? There is now, because I made a complaint about getting the lines repainted okay. because of several almost accidents, mm -hmm. including a head-on collision. Okay. Um, so there is a designated turning lane now. At, that's at Silo Hill. I'm talking at the square. At, at 
So I'm sorry. So the is there, there's no designated turning lanes at the square, correct? At our square in town? Yes. No, no, no. All right, so what's the legality of everybody that goes around? Like, so, so somebody's, yeah. somebody's heading if west. I'm, if, I'm he if I'm heading west down Main Street, making a left to come basically to this building, okay. and I'm sitting on the yellow line and everybody just starts going around me. They can't. Okay. Be, that's fairly very traffic control device. Okay. Hmm. No. But the square is set up. They made the square just wide enough that everybody can skirt around. But, but so. there's no designated turn lane in town. Correct. Okay. And then my, my other question was, are resolutions three and four forthcoming? Because we, we had one, two, and then skipped the five. I don't remember what the no I'd have to look on the I drive to see if somebody's if there's numbers already designated for something. I can't think off the top of my head if they okay. are or not. They are. They're designated for something. I don't know. All right. What they're. Uh, I just noticed a jump. That's all. Right. The intent is. Okay. Thank you. Okay. For the administrative business, we have Mark Lowe for the project for the picnic table for the park. Nicholas Lowe. Or Nicholas Lowe. Um, the Arbor Day Fair Housing. These are the big meetings. Proclamation. Mm-hmm. And that's it? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, tentatively, we will, for the budget, we'd like to present the budget like we did last year in mid-April. So there'll be two meetings in April. May's meeting will be solely for the budget. Um, as a reminder, the budget must be approved by June 30th. Um, you need to approve the budget before January or June 8th. I'm going to Italy for two weeks. <laughs> Maybe you will, maybe you won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's just a kind of a heads up timeline. If you do know, um, which I've already mentioned to Commissioner Davis, if you do know there's things that you would like to see in the special request in the budget, please get them to us sooner than later. Staff will start meeting uh, in two weeks to start preparing the budget. So if you have something in mind that you know now, go ahead and send it to me. Do you need a motion to accept the thing or just consideration um you need unanimous to accept your agenda okay just give me a motion to accept the agenda as presented for the next meeting for I'll march the second i'll make a motion to accept the meeting for the march 2nd meeting as presented second motion has been made by commissioner ritz second by commissioner o'donnell all in favor please say aye aye aye, aye. any nays motion carries i need a motion to adjourn the meeting a uh, motion to adjourn the meeting at 10-22. Motion has been made by Commissioner Burns, second by Commissioner O'Donnell. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Thank you.